In 2012, the New York Knicks started off the season horrendous, and then Carmelo Anthony went down with an injury, and all hope was lost of them becoming a playoff team for the remainder of the season. But in the game before Carmelo Anthony went down, Jeremy Lin was playing really well in the first half, and if you don't know, at that point Jeremy Lin had not played a single game throughout that season for more than 20 minutes, and because of Carmelo Anthony's input in the huddle, Jeremy Lin was put in for the rest of the game in the second half, and put up numbers of 25 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, and 2 steals, shooting 53% from the field and 71% from the free throw line. And then from that moment forward, Lin Sanity was born. Because after starting off the season 8 and 15, here comes this little Asian kid from Harvard and he starts schooling everybody on the court. As in the next 10 games, they went 8 and 2, and Jeremy Lin put up numbers of 25 points a game, 9 assists, and 2 steals, while shooting 50% from the field. 35% from 3 and 72% from the free throw line. And it got national attention as a lot of people thought that this was the beginning of the rise of Jeremy Lin. Or so a lot of them thought. Because during that time period that Jeremy Lin was putting up great numbers, there was a man in the name of Carmelo Anthony. And if you know anything about Carmelo Anthony, you know that the spotlight starts and ends with him as many people have spoken about in recent history, which we will get into. But Carmelo Anthony saw what Jeremy Lin was doing and he decided to put an end to it before it even got started. But before I go any further with this video, guys do not forget to drop a like so I can keep making fire content just like this. Let's try to shoot for a thousand likes because my videos have been getting hella low views as of late. That's why I'm doing voiceovers now because people were complaining about the face cam videos. So I like to keep my subscribers happy, you feel me? But let's get back to this video as we talk about how Carmelo Anthony ruined Jeremy Lin's career. The New York Knicks were coming off of a season in 2011 where they had traded for Carmelo Anthony to pair with Amari Stoudemire before his contract expired, so they decided to trade essentially their entire roster of players that included players like Danilo Gallinari, Chauncey Billups, and Wilson Chandler. So I think it's safe to say that the expectations for the New York Knicks were to be a relatively competitive team in the Eastern Conference, and with the way that they started off the season, it didn't look like those things were going to happen. As they started off terrible, finishing with an 8-15 record, before Jeremy Lin had even started and it became obvious to everybody watching that the New York Knicks even though they traded for Melo they had nothing to surround Melo with and that's why the emergence of Jeremy Lin was very key to getting Carmelo Anthony and the New York Knicks back to prominence in the NBA and with the coach being Mike D'Antoni it became very obvious that he was trying to replicate a similar system to the one that he had with the Phoenix Suns. But looking back at what happened in New York, it became a travesty how Carmelo Anthony treated Jeremy Lin and also even the coach of Mike D'Antoni. Because say what you want about Mike D'Antoni, I know that Mike D'Antoni is not the perfect coach. I know he has his flaws. In the postseason, he has failed numerous times with great rosters, whether in Phoenix or in Houston, but the guy still has produced results in the regular season and that's all the Knicks wanted at that time the Knicks were a losing organization for years and even when they got Carmelo Anthony they barely made it into the playoffs and they cleared out their entire roster for him so when Jeremy Lin started playing well in February and put up numbers that were damn near godlike for a couple of weeks and the Knicks were actually getting W's you would think that Carmelo Anthony after he came back from his injury that he would conform to the system that was actually getting them wins unlike the system that wasn't working with the isolation plays where he does jab steps for 50 seconds and then puts up a post fadeaway. But no, because that's not who Carmelo Anthony is. Him play off ball? Him be a spot up shooter? Him actually try on defense? That's beneath Carmelo Anthony. That's not what he's about. Because Carmelo Anthony's all about having the spotlight on him. We all know this, we all knew it in Denver, and he proved it once again in New York. And for all those people out there that are saying, we don't know what happened, you weren't in the locker room, don't believe everything you read, all of you that still deny all those claims and rumors that Carmelo was jealous of Jeremy Lin, you can fuck off. Because there have been multiple people that were in that locker room that actually stayed 
stated or at least insinuated that Carmelo Anthony had jealousies of Jeremy Lin taking the spotlight, such as Amari Stoudemire and Mike D'Antoni. Carmelo Anthony even went as far as to state that it was ridiculous the amount of money that the Houston Rockets gave Jeremy Lin after the Knicks failed to match the offer. You already messed up his little come up in New York and now you're trying to throw shade on him for getting the bag? You're the same guy who stayed in New York because you were offered a bigger bag and you didn't want to go team up with Derrick Rose and an up and coming Jimmy Butler in Chicago. So as far as I'm concerned, that situation just exposes the hypocrisy of Carmelo Anthony. Hell, you could just look at what George Carl said in his book when he talked about Carmelo Anthony. These are his words, not mine. Carmelo was a true conundrum for me in the six years that I had him. He was the best offensive player I ever coached and he was a user of people, addicted to the spotlight and very unhappy when he had to share it. He really lit my fuse with his low demand of himself on defense. He had no commitment to the hard, dirty work of stopping the other guy. Keep in mind that that was his coach for six years. And for people that are saying, hey, he could just be mad at how Carmelo Anthony left Denver and forced them to basically trade him to the Knicks, then look no further than what Chauncey Billups stated when he was talking about why Carmelo Anthony didn't have a job in the NBA at the time because a lot of people were saying he was quote unquote black Bald. Scoring 30 meant too much to Melo. Mm. It meant too much. He could have games where he had 20, 22, we win the game and he's mad. He might have 36 and he's in there, you know, we lose the game and he's in there picking everybody up. Scoring 30 meant too much. I'm not even going to focus on what George Carl said specifically. I'm going to talk about what Chauncey Billups said because I think that applies more to what we're talking about as it pertains to Jeremy Lin. This is a guy that literally could score 30 points and lose and be happy, but yet will score anything less than that and be mad even though they got a W. And I think that perfectly applies to how he treated Jeremy Lin. Even though Jeremy Lin was getting W's, Carmelo Anthony could not handle it because his ego was not given enough credit for them getting those W's in the first place. He wants to win, but he wants to win his way. We not only saw it in Denver or in New York, but we even saw it in Oklahoma City and in Houston. Whether it was poor efforts on the defensive side of the ball, passing up three-point shots for mid-range jumpers, or even claiming that he was not going to come off of the bench even though it was very obvious that he was past his better days and he needed to do that to extend his career now look at him we don't even know if he's going to have a job next season and honestly i wouldn't be feeling bad for him if he doesn't and for all the people out there that don't understand how this severely impacted the new york knicks and jeremy lynn's career as a whole let's just take a look at the next 10 games for the new york knicks when carmelo anthony came back as in the next 10 games they went seven and three and carmelo anthony shot 40 percent from the field and below 35% from three and only averaged 19 points. Keep in mind that they also went on an eight game losing streak and it essentially led to Mike D'Antoni resigning from the New York Knicks because he wasn't going to put up with Carmelo Anthony's bullshit for much longer. Meanwhile, when you look at how it affected Jeremy Lin, this is a guy that bounced from team to team, went to Houston for a while, the Lakers, the Hornets, the Hawks, and honestly, he just never really fit anywhere and now he's currently playing overseas in China and he cried about not getting a job and people tried to make fun of him which i honestly don't even get how that's funny and i always wonder just how good jeremy lynn would have been had he stayed in new york and had mike d'antoni as his head coach and he had a system that was actually tailor made for his play style for example you could look at a guy like steve nash and i know the situations are a little different as steve nash was a guy that was good before he even got to phoenix making a few all nba teams and all-star appearances but if we're really being honest, he would not have been a Hall of Famer had he not ran into Mike D'Antoni in his early 30s. It's very ironic that he just so happened to peak around that time when he met a coach that could inflate his assist numbers. And I'm not blaming Steve Nash. He's one of the greatest players of all time and a top 10 point guard in NBA history and one of the most efficient players to ever touch a basketball. He's a great player in his own right, but what his career shows is that not every single player can live up to their true potential if they don't have the right coach and the right 
system to be able to develop them and I think that same philosophy applies to that of Jeremy Lin. This is a guy that came out of Harvard, undrafted, went to the Warriors, ended up getting cut from there, went to the D-League for a while, and eventually found his way in New York and found a coach that helped him play at the highest level and he dominated the NBA for a couple of weeks and became a national phenomenon in ways that we had not seen and still have not seen to this day in NBA history. But I guess that Carmelo Anthony just couldn't take it and didn't want to change his game to help a guy like Jeremy Lin lead the New York Knicks into W's. Because if Carmelo Anthony wasn't the reason that a team was winning, then he never was going to be satisfied with the final outcome. And it's kind of sad, really, because Carmelo Anthony underachieved immensely in his career. Because I find it ironic that all of his little draft buddies on the banana boat, other than Chris Paul, got chipped up when they teamed up in Miami because they were willing to sacrifice not just money, but also their numbers and play style and change up things in their game in order to win championships. Because no matter what, as great as a career that Carmelo Anthony had, he could have been better and he could have done more had he been able to sacrifice but I guess that's just not in his dictionary and he showed that to the fullest extent with how he killed Lin Sanity. But that concludes this video you guys. Make sure you drop a like down below. Let's try to get to a thousand likes so I can keep making fire content on YouTube. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified after each and every single video that I post. Y'all follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. Those links are in the description box. Y'all have a beautiful blessed day. Stay safe and wash your hands. I'm out. Peace.